I wanted to take a minute with you guys today and talk about how to interpret your candle flames and what's happening with your candle when you're doing um, fire magic, candle magic, right? So I have a couple of videos up here on how to work with these type of candles. Uh, you can also do spells with your own, creating your own candles as well. You don't have to use ones that are preset for you. But when these burn down, they burn in certain ways that let us know how our magic is working, let us know what's going on with the spell. And if we don't understand what to look for, uh, we might not really know like what's going on or if it's working or what's happening. So that's what I wanted to talk with you guys about today. Now, some people use the glass candles. You could also look at some of this with taper candles uh, burning down as well, because they will still have a flame, they will still have a wick, and they are a little bit longer, just like these candles. So hopefully this information I'm about to share will be really helpful for you. Now, the first and easiest one is that if the candle is burning, when the flame is very tall and very long and very bright. So if that's happening, it usually is an indication that your spell is going well and you're going to get what you want. Um, that means that the energy with which you've charged the candle has been very strong and a good outcome is likely for that. Uh, on the opposite end, we want to talk about what happens if we have a very small flame. So that means it's not, you know, the candle magic is either is going very, very slow or is hesitant for a variety of reasons, which can include but are not limited to. One, the magic that you're working against is very strong. And so the candle is having a hard time pushing it back against it. So there is some resistance. So that could be one of the explanations for like a very small flame. The other reason, uh, it's kind of the opposite of what I mentioned before, is that maybe you don't have enough energy and intention in that candle in order for it to work properly. Sometimes this happens when we're not focused or we don't know how to focus our energy. Uh, sometimes it happens when we try to do magic when we're kind of not in that space. Uh, maybe when we're not feeling super great or maybe we're a little tired. So it's very important to work when you're in a good space because this is something that can happen. Another thing that can happen with this is that you are trying to create magic or an opening or an opportunity or healing or whatever you're doing and the outcome is already predetermined and there's no changing it. So it's another way of letting you know that this is set in stone, this is meant to happen, this is supposed to happen this way. Um, we love you, we're sorry, but we can't help you. And so you get a little small flame. So that's another reason that that can happen. And that one's always a really tough one too, depending on the seriousness or the heaviness of what you are trying to correct or invoke. Uh, the very last reason that you could be getting a small flame is that you are trying to do something that spirit is trying to protect you from. Sometimes we want certain things, but that's not what we need. And so it's spirit's sort of way of having our back. And they're like, no, 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 we don't want you going down this way um, because it could take us off the path of where we need to be going. So sometimes that will happen as well. So it could be a, a variety of different reasons and it's up to you to determine which one you think is suiting the situation that you're in better. Now we're gonna move on to the speed of which things are burning. So sometimes things will burn very fast and if that's happening, it's a very good indication that your candle uh, magic, it's going to work very quickly for you. The path is wide open. Um, it's something that's, you know, supposed to happen. It's, a, it's aligned with you. And so it's going to just move really quickly. And that's always a really nice feeling. If the candle's burning average speed, then you're somewhere in the middle. It's kind of the sweet spot. You just got to be patient and let everything, you know, kind of unfold the way it's going to. Uh, the thing that's really tricky is if we get a really slow burning flame, because then we go, what the heck is going on? Why is this so slow? So, you know, the reason for that is uh, there's a resistance some, somewhere there as well. It's kind of very similar to having a small flame, right? Um, there could be something blocking you. There could be resistance. You could be trying to move stuff that doesn't want to be moved or that shouldn't be moved. Um, or, you know, sometimes too, when we manifest things, Timing is also a really big issue, right? So just because it might be something or a door that's not able to open for you right now, and that's what that small flame is showing showing you, it doesn't mean that it might not open for you later. So if you see something like that, it's also good to take a step back and kind of analyze where your situation is at and consider that that could be a possibility too. Um, so those are some things that are happening with speed of candles. Um, another thing that we can talk about is the noise with candles, right? So sometimes those candles will make noises. You'll hear a pop or a crackle or something like that going on. And so when you hear that, um, it's supposed to, it's the definition of that is, is it's supposed to mean that spirit is talking to you, right? Or the spirits, or your ancestors, or somebody is trying to kind of talk to you through the magic that you're doing. So if that's the case, if you think you can kind of 
clear your mind and, and sit and meditate and kind of reach out and, and connect, of course, in a safe space um, that you create for yourself and maybe see if there is a specific message for you. You know, that could be an option too. Maybe there's some guidance there, some wisdom that you need. So that's another option for if you have something that's kind of crackling and popping like that. So we've talked about all the different kind of flames and what could be going on in different situations. So, but what happens if your flame goes out? What happens if that candle, the flame just goes out, right? So that could happen for a bunch of different reasons. Now, one, it could be physical stuff in your environment. Maybe some wind comes by or you know, the fan turns on and the candle goes out. So keep that in mind too, because sometimes it can be a physical thing that's happening. I mean, if that's not the case and you keep lighting it and it goes out and you keep lighting it and it goes out, it might be a sign that the spell is something that you're not supposed to be doing, right? And so the candle is just like, nope, and that's it. So the candle keeps going out. So take a look at, and consider what actually it is that you're doing. If maybe it's something you should be doing, maybe if it's something that's not right for you at the time, you know, really take a good look into that if that's something that is happening. The next thing that we should talk about is what happens when your glass gets soot on it. This can happen in a variety of ways. It can happen from anything being kind of like a little white and clear and cloudy on the glass to something that gets more gray to something that even gets very, very black. What is this and why is this happening? Well, this is just a lot of like kind of negative energy and buildup that's going on around this spell or whatever it is that you're trying to create or manifest or return to sender, um, whatever it is, it's just, it's, it's yucky, dirty energy, you know, that's being, that's being released or blocked or redirected. Now, if you have this going on, it could happen. On, sometimes you get it just on the top of your candle. Sometimes you get it, you know, some of the way down. Sometimes you get it all the way down. And this is just an indication of the level of stuff that you are clearing. Now, what I would say and recommend, and it's totally up to you how you want to work, but for me personally, when I see any soot on the candle um, in any way, even if it kind of clears up towards the bottom, I always light a second candle just to be sure that everything's gone. If that candle has soot on it, I will continue to light another candle until the candle burns clear. Um, eventually it will do this, but for me, I just want to make sure that I buffer anything and everything away from me um, that I'm trying to clear out, release, or whatever it is that I'm doing. So that might be something that you want to try if you notice that you're getting soot on your candle. So keep that in mind if that's something that shows up for you. The last thing that I want to talk with you guys about today is what happens if your candle breaks? I went for, gosh, like almost a decade without having a candle break on me. So I was very shocked the first time it happened because I didn't really know that like that was an option um, of something that could go down. But the spell that I was doing, it was very heavy. I was blocking some very heavy, heavy negative energies away from me. I was trying to protect myself and there was just some nasty stuff that was going on. And my candle was really sooty at the top, like black, like very black. Um, and it was burning the whole way down like that. And then it broke. And it was very strange how it broke. The top kind of came off. And there were all these little pieces around. Um, and fortunately, I had it in like a fire safe place and on a thing. And so when it broke, the wax kind of covered and put the flame out. But I thought that was so strange. And I was like, what is it? what is going on? So what's happening with that is usually when your candle breaks, you're doing magic against or to buffer to protect yourself against a very, very powerful source. And so what's happening is when the candle breaks, it's basically taking that energetic hit so that you don't have to. So if something like that just breaks on its own, you can imagine the type of power that is behind that energy. The next question is, well, what do I do if it breaks, right? Like, well, now I know what it means, but what do I do if this breaks? You know, you would dispose of the candle the same way that you would normally dispose of a candle when you, when you are done. One of the things I like to do, um, I'm not sure if I've talked about this before, so I'll just share it really quick. Uh, when my candle is done, I take the glass candle and I will um, cleanse it with some salt, you know, and I'll kind of shake it around and move it around in there before I dispose of it, um, just to kind of clear the energy and make sure that, you know, whatever's left in there is not going to be absorbed or thrown into another space. So that's something that I do. And then I will light another candle and I will do it the exact same way. It's kind of the same thing when you have the soot on the glass, you know, you just keep lighting another one and another one. Um, if the second one breaks, you really might want to take a look into what is happening with the spell, the individuals involved, the situation, because you need to be careful because that's a lot of energy for it to break twice. So there might be some other things you want to take a step back um, and maybe do magic in other areas, maybe do some things just in the material world in different areas, 
um, because it might, uh, it might be something that you can buffer away, but there might be some other stuff going on that you need to really be mindful of and take a look at and to protect yourself in different ways. The candle may not be enough on its own if that is what's happening. So um, be very mindful if, you're bra if two of them break uh, as you're doing this because there's something else going on in there. So I think that that's everything. That's a lot of the questions that I, that I basically get for candles. So I hope that that helps you kind of determine what you're seeing and if stuff is going on, what you should be doing. If you have any more questions, um, please let me know, drop a comment below. I'm more than happy to do another video for you guys if there's something that I missed, uh, because I really do think that it's helpful to understand uh, what you're looking at. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love and appreciate you. And I hope that you have an absolutely beautiful day.